Hello, my name is Mike Goldman and welcome to On The Mic. Very special guest today is a young man by the name of Josh Wade. Let's hear it from him. Thank you. Round of applause from the studio audience of one, two, there's a dude over there. There's a dude over there. Hey mate, uh, so it's my podcast and yours. I feel so honoured to be on yours and kind of a parasite under yours because you've got a gazillion That's more okay. follows than me. That's okay. That's what it's all about. We're yeah. here on my podcast as well. It's a dual podcast, uh, The Josh Wade Show. Yeah. Uh, it's the first time we've done something like this as well, so hopefully you guys mm. can uh, jump over to Mike's stuff and, uh, yeah, suck some shit out of him as well. But um, <sighs> Suck me all you like. Mm, this is different. I don't know how we're going to – this is going to be like we're interviewing each other. Well, I, I figured, uh, you know, we, we talk a little bit about uh, about me because yep. it's yep. my favourite subject and yep. uh, we could talk about you. That's and, my favourite subject. And it's one of my favourite subjects because I'm a big fan. Like, oh. I, I love the conspiracy <laughs> podcast. I oh, love it's the, changed. It's uh, changed. It's not conspiracy I'm, anymore. Yeah, I'm, t- I'm talking about it in the past. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and, you know, and the Josh Wade show yeah. or whatever you like to call it now and, and, and all the cunny stuff that you did all those years ago mm. it was fucking hilarious. Okay. And, and so cool. And uh, and everything that you're doing now and, and how you change changed from from Cunny to the, the the launch of Josh Wade 2.0 and and your tours and how everything's going and and there's, there's so much stuff that that uh, you talk about which which I love mm. in, in a conspiracy sense and uh, and also current topics and things that are going on so I want to talk to you about what's going on with the Weinsteins I want to talk mm. about the Trumps yeah. I, I, want to, I want to talk about Lisa Wilkinson you know leaving the Today Show because she's not getting paid as much as Carl mm. uh, there's there's so much uh, cool stuff that we can go over but how are you man what's going on i'm good i'm good this has taken a while to do so we filmed one of these in sydney yeah. a couple of weeks ago and the cameras were fucked and everything just sort mm. of went down it wasn't meant to be it fell i had pieces. no voice i had no voice either <laughs> that's right <laughs> that was you t- we're at a, a friend of mine uh place called margie brown's mutual friend yeah yeah um margie was my producer on a show called big brother up late which mm. i used to host so she was the lady talking into my ear saying uh, mike they're all asleep you need to talk and i just have to go uh, fuck, uh, 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 nothing's going on here or in the house. Uh, you have to sit here and watch me for the next two hours. And she'd just be feeding stuff into my yeah. ear. But she's one of the best producers in Australia and a really good friend of mm. mine. We're sitting there doing this podcast and you had no voice because you did like four or five before with like Gretel Colleen. But I didn't I didn't have a voice when I got to Sydney either. Oh, no. I had to hustle through well, What's going on? Were you partying or what? No, I, I, that's what Gretel <laughs> said. I wasn't partying. I just, I just woke up and I thought, who who has no voice? Like, who wakes up and actually has no voice? That's well, got to be rare. Well, me the other day, because I'm the Sydney Kings courtside announcer mm. and I basically have to scream at the crowd when, mm. you know, the team's down a few points because it really makes a difference when the crowd's behind the team to help right. them. You know, get it across the line, and uh, and the next day I had to <laughs> had to do all these voices for a new show mm-hmm. coming up called The Real Penguins of Sydney yep. for Sea Life Aquarium. So because I'm a voiceover guy, that's how I make my money most of the time. I don't mm-hmm. fucking make money out of podcasts, mm-hmm. um, not yet, but not yet. And so uh, I had to do all these voices of these penguins, and I'm like, uh, 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 couldn't really do it. But uh, so. We're going to redo that in the next couple of days, but yeah, it's it's a tough thing when you um, you, you know you're an MC and you're hosting shows and you mm. need to get your voice okay. But one thing that always works for me, my dad's a voiceover guy as well, a radio announcer. He um, he uses this stuff called uh, Propolis. You ever heard that? So like some Alex that? Jones fucking yeah. supplement shit. Yeah. So if you would like to buy some of the Mike Goldman and uh, Josh Wade yeah. Propolis, you, all you need to do is go to our website. Uh, no, it, it's it's actually you can get it in a spray or a, yeah, yeah. a lozenge. And what is it? Uh, it's it's uh, I think it's the outside of the uh, the beehive, right. and, and it, apparently it keeps out a lot of the bacteria and stuff from right. bees when they're they're making. Does he take that every day? If he's on no, the radio every day, not every got... day, no. Just just with your voices right. playing up and a bit funny, and uh, and steam as well. You know, just steam just helps breathing in some steaming. It gets the the oh. air into your to your lungs and the steam into your lungs and the water onto your. So your bongs aren't cords. bongs aren't the way. No, to bong, go. bongs are good. As, <laughs> as much weed as you can possibly smoke. Uh, that was the other thing I was getting to. Preferably bucket bongs. Bucket bongs. Yeah, yeah. they're a bit lighter on the. Lungs. You ever had a bucket bong? I have. Have you had a bucket bong? I, actually, the, the first weed I ever smoked in my life was when I was fourteen. Yeah. And uh, mm-hmm. I was at a petrol station in Brookvale, and I just went in to pay for a paddle pop. Yeah. And uh, my mate was in there, and he said, "I just had a bucket bong." I go, what the fuck's that? Because yeah. I don't know. The dude who runs a petrol station's got him out the back. You want one? I'm like, ah, oh, bucket bong. What the yeah. fuck's that? And a paddle pop. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> paddle pop. This is fucked up. Yeah. And uh, and the next thing you know, um, I had this bucket. I'm coughing like a motherfucker. Yeah. And yeah. I. Next thing you know, I wake up 
uh, a few hours later on the floor of this petrol station. Oh, it clocked it's you still, out. It's still fully clothed. Yeah. And um, I got <laughs> home at like 10 o'clock at night. My, my parents are like, where are you? Where have you been? I'm worried sick about you. Oh, I've just been at my friend's studying. Well, you didn't have mobile phones back then, so they yeah. can't call you. Yeah. And, um, and I just uh, went, oh, can I go to, sleep, go to bed? I don't feel very well. <laughs> <laughs> Never really touched it again. They're terrifying. I mean, I used yeah. to smoke quite a bit. I don't really touch it anymore. But mm. I mean, uh, I remember having my first bucket bong and uh, going down on it. <laughs> it's like some Harvey Weinstein <laughs> shit. <laughs> uh, Sucking the bong. Yeah, Sucking the bucket. Yeah, the, essentially, it, well, when I, what do I remember from it? It was. It's like a uh, an orange juice bottle with with like the hose in the side of it, with a little bit of weed in the side, mm. and but the bottom's cut off. Yeah. And it's and it's in a bucket of water, and you have to. Suck the top of the bong so that all of all of the ah. smoke. See, you were doing it up. wrong. Oh, really? What, yeah, what is no, well, the better way to do it is to get. Uh, way. You learn. You learn a lot on this show. Um, yeah. The best way to do it is you get a two-liter bottle of Coke. Yeah. Cut it off there because it's got a better dome than a little <laughs> orange juice box. It's got a better dome, and then you put the cone piece in the yeah. in the lid on the top. Yeah. So you cut a little hole into the lid. You put it in, mm. light it, and then obviously the bottle things dunked into the water and as you pull the bottle up the suction slowly sucks the thing and then you just go down on it so do a harvey weinstein you're down wow and i remember going down and it, like trying to inhale it all in and it just felt like my head exploded from just the amount of smoke that yeah. had just instantly gone in it's not good it's, it's not good I mean, it's um it, it, i mean if you're gonna smoke weed and you just really want to get fucked up i mean that's the way to do it and i mean you've you've been a um an advocate of pot smoking over the years well, and you've even done a documentary uh, on it yeah but see i'm i'm two ways about it. i was out with someone this morning talking about it and uh look i don't think i actually don't think cannabis was ever used uh meant to smoke i mean if you're going outside now and you took one of those eucalyptus leaves and just started sucking that in and was doing you know sucking in the smoke from that for 20 years that's not healthy like it was made no. it was made to be consumed in you know, to be vaporised, mm. to be uh, boiled down to oil. Maybe mm. not boil is not the right word, but wow. do you know what I mean? Like the, there's components within it, mm. not just the THC part, but the CBD part that's all the medical qualities yeah. is what the epileptic children are taking, all these. Yeah. That's where the, the magic Glaucoma as well, apparently it helps your eyesight. Mate, it, helps, it helps a lot of things and it's, it's sort of irrefutable. So, mm. um, you know, the 23-year-old that I am now is mm. much different to the 19-year-old that was just like, yeah, Experimenting let's, with crazy shit. let's all just go and smoke bongs. I don't think the world 19, should be 19, you're that. a late starter. I was 14. Oh, no, I was 14, <laughs> but when I really got into oh, okay. it was, was, <laughs> was 19. Uh, uh, I went to uh, Freshwater High School on the North Shore of Sydney. and it sounds like a shitty uh, ABC uh, show. Oh, man, yeah, Freshwater High. Yeah, yeah. And a uh, public school because I've been kicked out of the private schools before that. And I was only there for a year because I actually got kicked out of there too before I went to St. Paul's. And, and they would be smoking weed in the place playground of that mm. school the kiwi kids up up at the back of the playground mm. yep. but it was it was rampant and that was actually one of the kids who's in the petrol stations like come on go and have a bucket bong i'm like man whatever i want to be cool like you but it is it affected your brain in any way from mm. it's clearly affected mine yeah i think uh it's mine ultimately i think the the good part about what you just said is is that these days it's not it's not weed like kids mm. aren't at the back doing weed like there's kids going to school taking fucking acid yeah. they're taking fuck they're smoking ice in some places yeah. fuck man every you know mm. i would much rather if i was a principal of a school or if i was a it father was just weed, yeah that that oh okay it was just a joint like you know mm. fuck that's okay but mm. with the mind altering stuff yeah. yeah i don't i think that my brain is wired much differently to what it was mm. uh and it's not the best thing to be smoking copious amounts of mm. cannabis while your brain's still developing when you're 18, mm. 19. Because it's a depressant as well and you've had yeah. problems with depression and it, do you think that's added to it? I, I used to say, I used to probably try and trick myself into thinking that it was helping it and I don't think mm. it made it any worse but I think the fact that I was mixing it with antidepressants and mm. drinking sometimes uh, probably didn't help. I think if I maybe just consumed the CBD part of it mm. um, and was you know taking that as sort of a, an a way to, because you don't get high, it doesn't have the psychoactive yeah. um, properties in it. Mm. You just sort of take it and, and it's therapeutic on that level. But um, yeah, I think, I think it's brought me a lot of good because I feel like I look at the world in such a different way. Like everyone looks at it from one angle and mm. I feel like I'm a part of a percentage of people that sort of can look at it from this angle and yeah. go, hey, look at what's going on in, in this, in, on this angle of the, whatever the fuck I'm talking Spectrum. about. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but 
I mean, it's caused. How do you feel now? So, do you still smoke it occasionally, or is it just yeah, a fun yeah. thing? Yeah, Some, yeah. Sometimes I will, but it's definitely. I don't really, but I was at a party a few years ago with my mum. Yeah. And someone was passing around a joint, and I'm like, oh, no, no, thanks, I don't really smoke it. And mum snatched it up out of their hands and went, Michael, you're so fucking straight. <laughs> I'm like, where the fuck? Yeah. Mum! Slow down. She she will be watching this as well. Yeah. She watches everything. Actually, she's um she's your only she's Patreon. my only sponsor on on Patreon. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. that's great. <laughs> Patreon.com uh, forward slash on the mic. Thank you, mum. Five dollars a month. Yeah. It keeps me going. Uh, so she's probably just pulled out the sponsorship for that. So Good. yeah, uh, yeah. Now yeah. we're struggling. If you'd no. like to help us, but let's not um not talk about the weed too much uh, um because we've got so much other stuff that yeah. I want to talk to you yeah. about as well. Yeah. I don't want to dwell on that. But yeah. um, if people would like to see that documentary. Um, mm. it, it's great. It's got Darren Hinch in it. Yeah, you're yeah. hanging out in Nimbin, and yeah. you, you, I think it's Mardi Gras is yes. the festival yeah. you're at. And there's a lot of people that are, are, are for for it being legalised in Australia, and it was really good to to get their take mm. on it and see how the police handle it. Yeah. in Nimbin was really interesting yeah, as is. well. Yeah. So where can people see that? Uh, just on uh, my YouTube channel, youtubecom slash Wade. But I mean, essentially, it was it was a pilot for something that we want to do bigger. Um, yeah. I don't know if I'd approach my documentaries in that. I think I was trying too hard to be oh, serious. Man, it's awesome. It's so well done. Oh well, it's it was great. it was you very do, hard to do. You should do more of them. Yeah, plans to do more docos. Yeah, yeah, some really good shit as well. Yeah, so right. What are you gonna be sleep more con- conspiracy documentaries? Are you, no. you going to be like Alex Jones and, and like hiding mm. in the bushes at one of those um, Bilderberg parties? <laughs> I'd like to, but I also want to keep a career in show business. So uh, I'll probably. Mm. Uh, do you, do you think doing conspiracy podcasts, um, it, it can lose you a lot of work? And people go, oh, he's the conspiracy yeah, guy, not interested. Yeah, I've already experienced that. That's why we're, that's really? why we're changing the name of the show. Because, well, for, for a multitude of reasons. Yeah. The, a lot of the episodes that we do on my podcast uh, can be with, you know, different celebrities, but then we have people that have got, you know, a lot of really good things to say. Like we just interviewed a psychologist that was on here about mental health and male suicide. And yeah. putting that under the banner of conspiracy mm. is, uh, I feel... It's immature, but it's also it's not doing me or the guest any favors mm. by doing that. So I mean, it's a part the, of your evolution from Gunny, Josh yeah, Wade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Putting yeah. it all behind you. It's we're doing the same show. Yeah. We're doing the same show, but I just don't want to put any any everything under the banner of conspiracy. Because yeah, because as as you don't we, only talk about conspiracy on no, it. I mean, you're talking about no, no. everything that's going on in the yeah, world at the same time. Yeah. But, but I, I did think it was great. And if people want to see it and see what happens with Darren Hinch mm. and uh, and Nimbin and all the the crazy hippies, yeah, <laughs> it's uh, it's worth having a look at. I'd love uh, to get Darren on the podcast. That's one. Darren that I, Darren would be amazing. I can get Darren for you, you if can. you want. Oh, yeah, definitely do. get you one on one with Darren. Yeah. We've We're tried. We've tried really? over and over I'm, and over again. We've sent him the clip that's got a million views on I know, Facebook. I know his agent. Just leave it with me. He's got an agent. Of I'll course sort it out. Yeah, she's, He's a senator. She's a beautiful Greek girl. Oh, she, great. she actually used to work with us on, on Big, Brother Big Brother as well for great. a long time. All right. There you and, go. Uh, yeah, and actually, <laughs> I won't go into how I know, but uh, I'll get it as, as watch this as well okay. and uh, and sort out an interview with Darren because I know that uh, that he, he would, he'd love to speak to you again. I mean, I know that he spoke to you a little bit in the uh, well, I mean, in, we in the, in the video, saw in the him. Doco. We saw him at the very end. We were actually packing up to leave and uh, I saw him and went, finally, I've been trying to track you down all day. And I pulled him over and, and I said, can you do a quick interview? He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we started doing it. And then all yeah. these people, st- it was just between me and him. And then mm. about 50 to maybe 80 people mm. gathered around mm. us and we're like taking part in like this studio audience debate. And yeah. I, I've, I'm a little bit embarrassed because I got too, I think I got too passionate and too fired up because it was not just Darren and weed. It was like everything I'd ever yeah. wanted to say to a politician. Yeah. Um, but we've I, got a lot more politicians in Australia mm, who mm. can line up plenty. Would you ever go into politics yourself? No, never. No, mm. no. Why no. not? People have asked me that. You've got a lot to say. Yeah, but I just don't think that the way that the system is, I don't think these politicians necessarily mm. um, can really make too much of a change. But, but you, um, I mean, you look at someone like Peter Garrett who was singing about it for years and then he had a crack at politics and got in there and tried to make some changes. Do you think that's why he left and went back to the band? Because he realised... Because he, he fucking sucked. He, he couldn't do anything. Because he, he was suck. caught in a, in a corrupted uh, yeah. system that doesn't work. It doesn't work for the people. There's mm. more power yeah. in people power and getting up and standing outside of something. That's what annoyed me about Nimbin. The one thing mm. that annoyed me, I thought, everyone's here today, everyone's having a lot of fun, they're yeah. taking drugs, they're doing all these different things. No one in Canberra gives a fuck. No yeah. one in Canberra is sitting there today going, oh, the stoners are in Nimbin. Yeah. Get the f- if fucking 
a million people can vote for Casey Donovan or someone on Australian Idol and spend money to do that. Get the fuck outside of Parliament House mm. right now mm. and stand up for things that actually fucking change your life. Make a difference. That's yeah. it. Mm. They're not going to do the job. They're not doing it. They want to keep their job so they can keep getting paid and fly fucking business class on Qantas, which I'm trying to do now. Qantas, if you'd like to sponsor us, please do. But otherwise, they don't. They don't. Maybe there's one or two in there or a few mm. of them that kind of give a fuck, but they know as well that... It's just such a fucking effort to try and get something through the system. Hmm. I mean, can, I, can, I do, can, I, can I just do a quick voiceover just yeah. after everything you said? Written, spoken and authorised by Josh Wade for the Josh Wade Party of Australia. Mike Goldman speaking. <laughs> yeah, authorised. No, I, mean, I reckon, you know, you've got your whole life ahead of you. Maybe it's something that you'll consider when you're like mm. 30 or 40 or something like that. But my, um, my stepdad, David Joe, yep. uh, God rest his soul, he's not around anymore. He, um, he was in federal politics for about 30 years. He was the federal minister for um, uh, administrative services. Uh, he was the shadow minister for um, tourism and aviation and had, had so much to do uh, when he was actually um, in Parliament and, and they were actually um, in the Liberal Party under John Howard. Uh, so much to do with, like, legislation in the country yep. and, like, so many, so many great things that they, they actually did and achieved. And, I mean, the gun control thing was, was one thing that, uh, that they got across the line. I mean, what do you think of that? I mean, the fact gun that we, control? We, we don't have uh, as many guns in Australia anymore. Ah. If, if Coming from a conspiracy point of view, you probably think we've taken all the guns off no. all, all the uh, convicts in Australia so that we can control them in case they decide to take over. No, I don't no. think so. I, I, I look past that argument a little bit because I go, like, even with the American stuff, yeah, it was put there... Uh, you know, in case the government gets tyrannical. At the end of the day, if every single American's carrying a fully automatic weapon, you're taking them weapons to a fucking drone fight. The yeah. game's over, they won. Yeah. But at the same time, um, the difference between Australia and America and, and what sort of annoys me when I see these fucked up mass shootings that happen over there is, you know, you see on your news feed Australians going, they should have just banned the guns. They should have just banned the guns. Banned the guns, banned the guns. We did it here at work. You often see the comparison between Australia banning the guns mm. and America not banning the guns and how there's never been a mass shooting here since blah, 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 blah. No, there's not. But all around the world, when you go have a look at places like uh, the UK and stuff like that, which took all the guns, I mean, the cops don't have the guns over mm. there either. Mm. The violent crime rate is still, is, is higher. They're just mm. not using weapons now. Yeah. Yes, it's much easier to go and shoot down a bunch of people with, you know, semi-automatic and fully automatic weapons. Mm. That's not good. But the mm. problem in the US is not these fully automatic and semi-automatic weapons. The, the, ma the shootings that are happening in scale, when, you, when mm. we really look at the big picture, mm. it's gangbangers with handguns. Yeah. All right? These mass shootings are happening, obviously, with these high-power weapons. But yeah. at the end of the day, you go look at what happened in Las Vegas. It was an elite... Well... The weapons that he used were worth a lot of money. They're not just weapons. Yeah. Or that he, he got a bunch of, what did he, it was a semi-automatic. Can I tell you what I think? Yeah, go. Don't, I think don't this, steal my theory either. But this, this is a theory that a lot of people are okay. saying online, so I'm, I'm no. not sure, 100% sure if it's your theory, but. I've trademarked like, it. <laughs> like th this guy, yeah. oh, I, I know the one that you're going to yeah, say, yeah, yeah. Um, but, but this guy, there's no way in hell he moved all of those guns mm -hmm. up to his hotel room. None of the cameras show him moving all these bags of guns. There the are no cameras. The, the cameras have all been deleted, you know, which is, that just says that's that not, red flags left, right and centre. Yeah. Come on. And everyone's saying there was second shooters. Mm -hmm. And like they had a, um, a security guard on Ellen, Ellen the other day talking about how, you know, he got in there and, and overtook things. I, there's something not right about that okay. guy as well. No, there was really no, weird well, there. Well, he just walked out of the, he was meant to go to Hannity, uh, a, a, a show on Fox and uh, was put in a psych ward the day he got to LA to do the interview. I believe that's the story, but he was definitely put in the same psych ward that Kanye West was put in after he sort of went on this... Um, Remember when he was saying quite a few things on stage during his concert and mm. he had to cancel the tour and got put in a psych ward because his, uh, uh, his personal trainer at his house had put him under, like, uh, like rang, them, rang up the whoever there, you know, 911 and said he was going crazy and they put him under that. I forget what the actual code is, but they did it to Britney Spears as well where they... The person's say, gone crazy code the and they got, just put the him in the mental the, asylum. The person's gone crazy. They're at, they're at risk of killing someone or themselves. Yeah, suicide watch. So we need the police and we need, the, we need 
to basically physically restrain them and, and put them somewhere. Yeah. So it came guy, out of the same uh, mm, psych ward that, that Kanye yeah. did. Um, but this this guy, like it was on Ellen, he he looked like there was there was something not right about him, and he was yeah. he was starting to cry about the whole thing. I mean, I understand it. Who's the guy next to him? Traumatic experience. That's touching his yeah. back constantly. Yeah, the other guy holding him. Like yeah. they didn't really refer too much about him. But but my theory is that um, th- there's no way that that this guy did all the shootings himself. There's, no. there's, there's other people involved. Yeah. There was a second shooter. Yeah. Um, I've, I've looked at, um, at 3D imaging um, YouTube videos of people, let's do it in the dark, 3D, yeah, yeah. 3D imaging of, 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 uh, of where everyone was looking when the gunfire was happening and the yeah. gunfire is coming from different areas of, yeah. of where the actual building is. Do you and hear this, it? You hear it when it's like, but they say there's oh, there's lots of buildings Echo. in Vegas. It's no, bouncing, no. bouncing everywhere. No, there's not a lot of buildings around where that was happening. Like way out in front of, mm. of where the the concert was. There's no buildings there. It's a big open space. Yeah. And and there's um there's bullet holes in the walls at the Bellagio. But if you actually look at the where the Bellagio is and where the shooter was, there's another actual building in between the Bellagio and where the shooter was. So how are there bullet holes through the walls in the Bellagio? Look. We're never gonna know yeah. what I am. And why, why do you think this is, but this guy's got no motive as well. So no. what, what is the motive even but then what's behind what? killing him and putting someone in there to, to shoot everyone and then running off and letting security look like they got him? What, what uh, still stops me though as well, um, if he doesn't have a motive and it is a conspiracy and that there's someone else behind it, don't you think they, and they were smart enough to pull this all off, then don't you think they would have been smarter as well to get someone that maybe does have a motive. Yeah, but what, would, what, what I mean? would the motive possibly be? Well, I don't know, but get someone that's maybe got a bit more of a criminal record and someone that you could, m- is less of a mind boggling thing where you go, he's never yeah. done anything, he's never done anything bad. Like, you, that's what fucks me up. Mm. But, I mean, uh, whenever- Just say if you had to make something up. So like, okay, we're gonna kill this guy and make it look like he shot all these people mm-hmm. so that we can make this money from selling more weapons or- No, 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 no. Uh, what, how, how would they, what would they have done it for? It's the, well, it has something to do with metal detectors and, and security in the United States. So obviously, you know, like private security and stuff like that uh, is worth a lot of money over there. You're talking about private militias and shit like that. Um, I believe the idea is is that if you can make all the places in the United States, the safest places, schools, mm. casinos, stuff like that, mm. uh, feel unsafe, airports, mm. aeroplanes, yeah. um, be unsafe, then you would have to implement more security officers, you'd mm. have to implement more... Um, Metal detectors. So what, what are you saying? Like they've gone and shot this guy and and, well, and and killed all these people so that more security would have to happen in Vegas and someone well, not just Vegas, who sells metal detectors would make more money. Well, not just metal detectors, but I mean just in general security and stuff. There's there's big money to be made. If I'm running them. But that would be like lots of different companies make metal detectors. It's not like one company has the rights to it. Mm, but there's, you know, there's always a top one or two out of the mm-hmm. whole thing. I mean, but you've they're, got, they're surely they're not going to put metal detectors on every single you don't s- think so? door and, they'll, and, and they'll, check people's bags at all the. You don't think so? They'll fucking rub up a 10 year old if, if they feel like, at, at the TSA, if they feel like they could have something. They don't give a fuck. Yeah, fair enough. They don't give a fuck. Mm. That's just one of the things, though. I don't. I don't think these things happen just for that one mm. reason. Mm. Is it something we'll just like nine eleven? We'll just everyone will keep talking about conspiracy theories. And, well, that's the idea, and, and the proof will never actually that's come out. That's the idea. And so maybe that's with, why they wanted someone who has, you know, no reason for doing it. So people will just throw all these theories out there, but yeah. no one will ever know the truth. No, exactly. They did it to JFK mm. as well. You'll never ever know. They know. The JFK one's mm. out there. You can find out exactly what happened on that day. Mm. Woody Harrelson's dad was, uh, was you know Woody Harrelson? Yeah, yeah, Woody, yeah, Woody Harrelson. He was, a, he was a Planet of the Apes. known hitman. What? Known hitman that was involved with uh, that on that day in the Bay of Pigs invasion. Uh, it was just a bunch of dodgy dudes that had money invested in all different sectors of society that, uh, you know, the mafia helped JFK win that election because mm. JFK's dad was heavily involved in the mafia and stuff. That's how they all yeah, got involved. Yeah, yeah, in I've heard about all, all of that. But like the, but, um, the I've seen all the, the close up photos of, of the shooter and where he was standing because there is actually a picture of where he was supposedly standing, the guy that got the blame for it. Uh, what was his name again? Uh, J- Oswald. Oswald, yeah. Harvey Oswald. Oswald? Yeah. yeah, they shot him. Yeah, um, but like in the distance, the photos got him standing there in his pockets. 
with his hand in his pockets. And, and then there's a guy next to him in, in, in a shadow standing next to him, the faceless man in the hat. You, you he possi- Yeah, he possibly... Oswald was uh, was a CIA agent yeah. or an operative, so he was obviously he either was working for the CIA, mm. which is government mafia, or was linked to an agency that they were using. Like when you see uh, US backed rebels, yeah, which is just we gave them guns, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. But wasn't he wasn't he like a, a double agent? Like, yeah. Didn't he have links yeah. to Russia? Yeah, he he was a double agent. Yeah, so it was easy to throw it on him. But uh, where the real shots came from? the whole time mm. and I mean if you go look this up this may just sound like I'm crazy but this is all this is all documented it's out there where the real shots came from were those three uh, the uh, who were they they were like these home, look, homeless looking teenagers so the idea was there was eight shooters that were coming from all different directions because they had to get the hit done properly if they missed you know the security would just be heightened so highly on that you wouldn't get the chance again to do it mm. um if you go, oh yeah, well, can you, can you shut that door down there? Some, or shut these doors. There's, there's some fucking screaming, sh- screaming kids in the pool. Some of them getting murdered in the swimming pool. Shut the fuck up. Anyway, um, yeah. Some so that, really that's did. that's it. That's another just, conspiracy theory that's been around for a long time. And they shot him from the uh, from the fucking what do they call from, it? From the, the grassy storm, knoll. No, the stormwater drain. From a stormwater drain. Three of them were under but there. That, but he was in a car, so you, you'd have to shoot upwards to. To get him. The line of sight he could still as he's get coming down the road. They were the last ones. They, they, everyone tried and they all missed and it was their last one. You're joking me. Yep. No. Nah. And there's a photo of them being taken away by police and a photo of... Uh, what? Out of the stormwater drain? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, they've got stormwater. They've got dirt and mud all up their legs. What? How come I've never heard of this? Yeah, go, go have a look at it. Okay, like we, we could talk about these mm. conspiracy theories for hours. If, oh, if, okay. It, this just one will blow yeah. your mind just quickly. Okay. Before oh, I add is to this it. the same sort of thing? No, no, no. It's, it's, a, it's linked into that story. Okay, yeah. His head was blown off, right? You know that his head was blown off in that video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exploded. Yeah. And in the autopsy photos, he has... A head. He's got a head in the autopsy photos. The mob still do it to this day. Um, it was a body double. They'd killed someone else that looked like him and used that as the, uh, as the autopsy thing to get away from it. Go have a look into but, but that. But he's, he's going, there's video footage of him going along waving to everyone yeah. with his wife. No, no I know. He, his head got blown off in that. But the, oh. the body that's in the autopsy photos yeah. and the one that they buried yeah. was... A body double. A body double. Why? Because the, like the mob obviously knocked someone off. They do Maybe that. they really shot him. What is the witness protection program? Right. He's dead. Is he really? No, he's not. JFK is dead. Mm. But the body that they showed everyone was, was not JFK wow. because it wouldn't have gone with the story that his head got the blown The CIA off. are going to burst through the doors at any second, so we're just going to stop talking this about this. This just sounds like craziness. I'm not saying that these are actually true, but there's a lot of evidence that points towards that going. Go on, if, you, if you're interested in this, go watch Everything's a Rich Man's Trick. That's Everything is a rich man's oh, what? Trick. Okay. Mm. All right. Hey, I want to talk to you about stand-up because mm. you have an amazing Great stand-up segue. show. Yeah. That because that's all comedy too. Because yeah. it's all f- yeah. it's a fucking joke that yeah. if any of that's true, it's absolutely ridiculous. Mm. But um, so, how did you first get into stand-up? Was it, it just from doing the the crazy cunny videos, and then all no. of a sudden thought, hey, it might be something in this. I'm going to do stand-up. Or did you do that first? No, I did stand-up first. I started when I was 13 in Townsville. Uh, I was 13. Act- mm. I was acting before that. Uh, yeah. I wanted to be an actor. And uh, I did one film, this film called Beneath Hill 60. And um, What was the film? Yeah, do you know that film? No, what was it about? Uh, it's a war movie, Australian war movie oh, about, cool. uh, I think it was, uh, don't, don't quote me on this one, World War One or World War II, where and a bunch what of were you doing soldiers. Well, originally, this is my big break, they were filming it in Townsville. They'd raised $10 million to do it. Mm-hmm. They were filming it out in a property outside of Townsville. And I'd found out who the director was and was email. Oh, not the director, the producer. I was emailing him from pre-production. Mm. Like it was two, still two years till shooting. And I was emailing him going, look, I really want to be in your movie, blah, blah, blah. Eventually got an audition for one part. And do you know Jeremy Sims? Yeah. Yeah. He was directing it and uh, went for the audition, did the audition. And then the audition lady or the casting director said, oh, just stay there. And uh, she brought in Jeremy and I've looked and gone, fuck, that's, I know that's the director. That's the guy up that late night show called Sex. He's yeah. one of the first guys to show his naked ass on Australian really? television. Oh, I didn't know that one. <laughs> now I have to go back and look. But um, yeah. yeah, he's come in the room and I've thought, holy shit, this must be important. He goes, sorry, I've just come out of a production meeting to come and see this. And I thought, oh, fuck, what if, I'm, what if they think like I'm going to be the right person for the role and I had to do it again? And then anyway, some cunt from Home and Away got the part. Oh, and, what? Uh, oh, he did Home and Away. I was just fucking 12 from Townsville. 
And I was on home and away when I was were 13. You? Good on you. Went back you at school? Back in the day when Danny Minogue was on the show and Craig McLaughlin was the teacher. I was so excited when I yeah. found out I got the part and I was sitting in the green room and they brought Danny Minogue in and I was like, oh my God, this is a girl from a show called Young Talent Time that I watched her growing up and thought she was just the hottest thing ever. Yeah. And now I'm sitting in a room alone by myself in my little virginal 13-year-old body freaking out. <laughs> Danny, uh, n- nice to meet you. I'm, I'm going to be in the scene with you. She's like, oh, that's nice. Oh, uh, well, yeah, it should be fun. <laughs> she fell asleep within seconds right. of me talking to her, and she slept the whole time. It was mm-hmm. the weirdest thing. She'd been out partying or something. I don't know what, what the fuck happened. What, what would be the equivalent of Denny Minogue today then, uh, like De- walking into that? J-Law. J- Oh, I've been someone younger. Like, I don't know. I can't, I can't call someone younger hot now because I'm not 13 and yeah, they're not 13. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, Jennifer Lawrence, maybe. But uh, then, then when we actually did the uh, the episode that I was in was uh, in the 80s, back when you weren't alive. Um, there was mm. a, a massive aid scare. People were dropping like flies, mm. and Madonna's doing all these fundraisers, about, you know, and raising awareness for AIDS. We had these these ads on TV of uh, a, like a big skeleton bowling a death ball down a bowling alley and humans standing the end and scattering and little kids getting scattered everywhere and saying, AIDS is coming, wear protection, wear a condom. You've got to see one of these ads. It's the most fucked up shit you've ever seen. And um, and so Home and Away thought that they'd do a uh, AIDS awareness episode. <laughs> and who are they going to use as the guy to bring up the fact that, oh, I don't want to get AIDS, I'm not giving blood? Me. <laughs> so I'm gonna, right. this little 14-year-old kid, um, Craig McLaughlin's like... Um, Okay, has everyone filled out their, their forms for, for giving blood? We've got to give blood in the next couple of days. And I'm like, no, I'm not giving blood. Everyone knows you get AIDS giving blood. And Danny Minogue's behind me and goes, um, oh, no, Gavin, that's not true. Because Gavin was my name on yeah. Home and Away. Um, Gavin. Everyone knows. Do I look like a Gavin? Everyone knows that they use different needles when you give blood. And I'm like, eh, get nicked. <laughs> that was my comeback. <laughs> And, um, and then I got trouble and I think I was sent out of class. But that, that was my uh, experience on Home and Away. Oh, I always wanted to be... Uh, that's what I wanted to be. Really? I always wanted to be the mainstream guy. And then as I got older... It's not older, too late. No, nah, I just got older and I, didn't, I don't want to be that guy. Don't want to be on Home and Away anymore? No, God, no. No thing? No. Nah. Yeah, I like doing my own thing. Mm. I like having my own outlet mm. instead of... Because it was that one experience doing that film that, you know, being told what to do was like, ah. So with stand-up, mm. uh, I was watching Ellen. Yeah. She was on, like, doing a HBO special. My parents were getting divorced at the time. It was mm. a shit place to live, a lot of fighting and, you know, How everything. old were you when that happened? Uh, 12, 13. So yeah, a lot of too. domestic violence and stuff oh, like shit. that. So it wasn't that fun. And, yeah. and then living there, put it on Ostar or whatever it was mm. called at the time, Comedy Channel, and... Um, yeah, there was an Ellen special on. I didn't even know who Ellen was. I knew that it was just this random mm. chick that had a talk show, but I didn't know why or how. And mm. uh, I was just sitting there. I remember laughing so much that my, my ribs fucking hurt and I was crying. Mm. Uh, and I don't know what it was about a you know 45-year-old lesbian from mm. the south of the US that caught the eye of a 13-year-old mm. bloke from Townsville. wouldn't say bloke, but a kid. Mm. Um, and I went, that's what I want to do. So um, mum would take... I oh, cool. found out the Irish pub there did open mic, music open mic, and I yeah. messaged them, said, can I come in and do some comedy? They're like, great. So mum would have to sign me in at 13. Every Thursday night, 10 p.m., mum would take me no down. No way. So you're 13. Yeah. And then it's... At an Irish pub yeah. every week doing yeah. stand-up. Yeah. And that's amazing. 16, I wrote my first one-hour show. 16? Mm-hmm. And sold that out. So just I had a friend that worked for my dad who was studying photography at university. I went to uh, I went to her and said, "Can you take some photos of me?" Because I had a studio at the university. She said, "Yeah, great." And I said, "Can you help me make a poster? I want to do a stand-up show." She said, "All right." So we took the photos. Uh, I'll show them. I'll show them to you after this. They're quite funny. And mm. uh, and yeah, we put up the posters around the school, and you know, I've got some big core flutes and put them up around town. And yeah, two hundred people came. Ten dollars a ticket on the door. And oh yeah, yeah. two grand for a thirteen-year-old kid. I oh, fuck. Oh, I was sixteen at the 16 time. But that then? was still a shitload of Pretty money. Pretty happy with that. Yeah. What'd yeah. you do with the money? Don't know. I probably Did you give commission to your mum? No, no, no commission. <laughs> no commission back. Those were the days. Because uh, back when I was about 13, 14, I was doing voiceovers because my dad, Grant Goldman, yeah. voiceover guy. And um, I saved up about, you know, three grand, two mm. or three grand for um, doing all my, I think I did a Commodore 64 computer ad, yep. which is like one of the first shitty oh, yeah. computers ever yeah. invented. That was, that was actually with Gretel Colleen as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, so all this money I had saved up, 
And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to you know, hold on to it and I'm going to buy a car or whatever when I get old enough. Yeah. But my friend Chris Marta, he uh, knocked my teeth out with a big stick by accident when he was waving it around. And Dad said, oh, well, that's going to cost a few grand. You can just pay for it with the money, mate. <laughs> so oh. it taught, taught me the yeah. worth of money real quick. Yeah, yep. Um, but yeah, so uh, you know that's that's a pretty good start for you. Like when you're 16, you know, making, it's delusion. Yeah, making making all them bucks and and then uh, you just go on a tour after that. No, it was, ne- it was never about the money. Mm-hmm. Um, not at all. Uh, what was it about? Just making people laugh. Delusion. Being accepted. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Mm-hmm. Um, I always remember the feeling of getting people to laugh at me at school and constantly wanting people to laugh at me. Mm. Uh, and I mean, now it's different because I'm like, oh, it's my job and yeah. you know, I'll do it when I get paid to do it. But otherwise I don't need people to laugh at me to feel approval. Mm. Um, but yeah, it was, it was definitely this overcompensation of wanting to be uh, approved and also um, not really, uh, didn't know who I was at the time. Like, mm. you know, I'm quite, I guess, a... Uh, I'm very intri- I think a lot. I'm constantly going 100 miles an hour. I'm also quite sensitive. I, I look at things in a different way. And being surrounded in towns by blokey, blokey, blokey mm. dudes um, was sort of like, well, how do I fit in here without, you know, you know, feeling in a afraid. country town where you know everything that's cool is football and beer. Yeah. And, it, and along comes a kid that wants to be fun and get up on stage and be the centre of attention. But ha- you can't be cool because only the footballers in this town are cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I, I had the same kind of thing when I was I was sixteen, seventeen. I um, got one of my first jobs in radio. I went to Taree, which is mm. uh, in a lot of ways like Townsville, country town. You know, it's you know based on football and beer and yeah. and truckers yeah. and. You know, there's, uh, you know, the Aboriginal community just out of town and, uh, you know, it's all about farming and all that kind of stuff. And, and you know, here comes a show pony just off home and away with his peroxide of hair yeah. and, you know, thinking he's the star of the show, you know, on AM radio station, yeah. 2RE, Coastal Radio, 1557. And I, I was a target, man. Like the mm. local football team, you know, go out on a, on a Friday night and they'd hunt me down, want to beat the shit out of me. So did right. you did you experience a, no. a lot of that? Or? No, I was mates with them. No, you loved them. <laughs> better than the better the devil you know than the devil you don't yeah. was my was my opinion. And I was the uh, the the jester in the whole thing. I was mm. able to go, all right. Well, everyone's talking about this. I'll you know make a joke about someone that did something fucking stupid at a party on the weekend. And I'll laugh, and then it was like, all right. And then I could stand back and go, because I was bullied probably grade eight, nine. Didn't have any friends at all. Would just sit by myself at lunch, and then. Uh, yeah, this this group took me in because I remember making a joke, maybe in drama class or something like mm. that, and they laughed at me. And, and I, I remember the day vividly where they said, you can come sit with us. And they were sitting at the basketball courts and they'd play handball at lunch. Uh, and it was all the cool girls and the cool boys. They mm. all sat together. And I sat down and they're like, welcome to the group, like, like some sort of fucking black magic initiation. Yeah. Uh, some Harvey Weinstein shit. And, um, yeah, uh, and I was safe in high school from mm. that from Did that you play point sport? Of, no, not really. Gave it a miss. Yeah, just wasn't wasn't good at it. I mean, I just I you're was a performer. Thinking, yeah, yeah. I mean, I try and exercise now mm. for my for my health, not mm. necessarily. I mean, it's good because you you start to look better. But mm. um, I place a lot of importance now on on what I eat and and exercise. But no, I was never sporty. Tried. I remember playing rugby league for the mm. first time. And the first game I played, school sports, we were versed in some other school, grade seven. This fucking cunt from Weir School, his name, that was the school, Weir School, and he was like this seven foot tall ranger. Mm. And I was on the wing, he was on the wing, he got the ball, he just starts running towards me. And it was in that moment where he, I'm watching him come towards me, I look out, no one else is going to, like, it's up to me to tackle him, otherwise he's going to score the try. Yeah. Just going, all right, just remember, like, the, just grab him by the legs. Yeah. <laughs> you get him? He ran straight through me, like I'm down, and his like knee just went butter. bang straight through Ouch. my face. Mm. You know, you know when you don't want to cry and it hits you. Yeah. You're sitting there, you're like, oh fuck. And especially at those ages mm. where you, we, you know, people aren't, um, you know, they want you to cry in those situations. That yeah. it's one of those things they'll run back and tell everyone, oh, Josh got hit, and but I, I was yeah. just holding back these tears. I was like, I'll never play sport again. Not sporty. Were you sporty? Yeah. You were sporty, weren't well, you? Well, I mean, not. I played rugby league mainly because my dad was the ground announcer for the Manly Seagulls, and you know, loved uh-huh. rugby league, and I was yeah. the mascot, which was probably better at being the mascot than I was actually playing rugby yeah. league. Yeah. Left, right, out was my best position, mm-hmm. and I just couldn't catch a high ball. Couldn't catch. Yep. It was hopeless. I, and I, I was injury prone. Yep. I'm injured 
now. all the time. I'm yeah. injured now. I, yeah. I, you know, I couldn't catch the ball. I dislocated my shoulder. I shattered the bone on my kneecap. So I could run. I was a fast runner. But uh, just, just playing sport wasn't good. I've, I've got a dislocated, fractured torn acl at the moment from an accident a motorbike accident i had just dislocated torn broken acl oh it's i don't Who even knows know what the fuck what, it is what is exactly is wrong with it. i know that nothing's actually broken because the uh i had an x-ray at two o'clock in the morning it sounds a lot cooler than it is like a motorbike accident but i should probably tell you the story about what really happened yeah he didn't tell so me so i was um i was in bondi and i yeah you know, yeah it's a hipster central area of australia yeah and i wasn't necessarily on a motorbike i was on a like a a big gay red scooter you can't say that wearing shorts yeah it looked like a marriage equality float like, okay all right why, that, why, why can't i say right. that oh, i'm just you know if you want a job in show business you can't say that well it did, but it's, it's true it like, yeah. I've, I've actually marched I don't in care. the mardi gras i don't care if it's true the uh, truth I, I, the I, truth I, I, doesn't mean politically correct okay all right so it was just a, a bright i'm only red. fucking with you like, gay <laughs> people own the word gay you can't say something's gay is in happy anymore no i happy know and gay yeah anyway so i'm riding around bondi on my scooter looking for a place to get a massage in my shorts and t-shirt yep. and uh i pulled out up outside a couple of places and then they were all you know booked out so yeah. the fourth one i got to i was, I was really annoyed and, I, and I, I went to get off a scooter and i burnt my leg on the uh on the exhaust yeah and as i've done that i've spun around and I'm like ah and and i tore my acl and and my knee and fell on the ground in front of oncoming traffic a uh, bus luckily saw me and swerved and just missed my head and then I've, I've crawled into the gutter, just like screaming, and uh, and I didn't end up getting a massage, but I was just in a lot of pain. So it's apparently one of the most like yeah. painful things to to, to do your yeah, ACL. It, it wasn't it wasn't uh, a big tough motorcycle accident. No. <laughs> Actually, no. me driving yeah. around a little scooter, go to get a massage. <laughs> you burnt yourself, which turned into it. Mm. You, oh, okay. So uh, we're talking about the, uh, the stand-up comedy and, and everything that you've been mm. doing. Uh, so where, whereabouts is uh, your, like your, your best area to play? I mean, you're, you're living on the Gold Coast. You, do you have your biggest following here? And, and where, where would be here. some of the, the, your favourite places to perform? Everywhere. Comedy festival? I like Melbourne. I always like Melbourne. Um, Melbourne's fun, especially fun. It was fun doing Cunny there because you were saying things that like, you know, you had sort of this outer crowd of Melbourne that were like, uh, you know, they weren't the typical Melbourne, you know, trendy, politically correct, social justice warrior. It was sort of these people on the outskirts where so they didn't really have an opinion on, you know, they weren't politically charged on anything. Mm. So you could sort of get up there and I was an outlet to go, you know, here, just come and listen to some fucked up shit. Like mm. it's a little bit fucking crude and stuff like that. And there's no need to get your ass all fucking in a knot. Let's just like chill out and laugh at some shit. Um, Melbourne's great. I love the Gold Coast. I really do. Like even before I moved here, it was always a really great place to perform. So it's it's probably my favourite place. Perth is also. Where do you perform on the Gold Coast? Where's the main stand up comedy joint? Uh, there isn't one. There's I mean there's groups that Gold do Coast stand-up. Arts Centre. You yeah, play there. You just hire there. Yeah, I just yeah. hide there. Um, so you hire it out yourself and go and do a show there. Yeah, well, my promoter hires it out because I don't have the money. But if you want to support me on Patreon, <laughs> patreoncom slash Wade. You got your plug before. I'll fucking Hi, go run in. Yeah. Patreon.com forward slash on the mic. If you've got five more bucks, mum. Uh, She's probably not watching, no, <laughs> watching no. anymore. Uh, yeah, well, that's cool, man. So when's the next tour? Next year. Mm. Uh, yeah. Uh, you only tour like once a year. What the fuck? Mike, I tour like a lot. Like, Come on, man. There's still a few months left. What's, what are you doing? Well, I've just spent the whole year doing it. I, I started. I listen to Joe, Joe Rogan and he's like every second podcast. Yeah. Like, I got more shows here. I got more shows there. I'll do. Shouldn't you be constantly out there doing stuff? Yeah. So I'll do like at the start of the year, you have Adelaide. Oh, uh, yeah. Perth Fringe Festival. Mm. So you'd normally do a week of shows there. So America's much bigger though. I guess. Seven day, Yeah. Seven days straight <laughs> there. Uh, and then after that, you do Adelaide Fringe, which mm. is about seven days. If you want to, you can do more, but a mm. week's a good time. So, so Adelaide Fringe after that. Then you've got uh, Melbourne Comedy Festival. That comes up. That's a month long. Mm. It's thirty so, days straight. So you got thirty shows. Well, no, I don't do thirty shows anymore. My first year, I did oh, thirty yeah. shows um, or twenty-seven because you get. Uh, it's good off. money for every show. Uh, or do you just get a take on the really, door? Or really something like that? No, no, you, you get the money on the door, but obviously yeah. you've got expenses, and then you've got commission yeah, that you have yeah. to pay and all that. So, 
Uh, yeah, I mean, it really depends for every different person. I mean, mm. if you don't sell the tickets, then know, you come I at a loss. A mate of mine do a stand-up show in uh, people the Melbourne a Comedy lot of Festival. Money. And he, he's like pumped. He's got posters and everything like that. And there was like 12 people yeah. in the audience. You have to understand and that there's 500 or so shows going yeah. on in the same vicinity on the same night every night throughout that yeah. month. So it's the competition is insane. And, and my first year that I did it, um, I remember going down the year before just to check it out. And I remember meeting Chris Lilly uh, and I just thought, oh, this is amazing. But yeah. I went to see uh, another comedian uh, called Alex Williamson. I don't know if you've seen his stuff, but um, he's great. He's a genius. And did Chris Lilly do stand-up? No, not really. I think no. he did Raw, but I don't yeah. think he really he, he, wanted yeah, just, to do. He's just done shows that have sold all over the world. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Summer um, Heights High. What's done it? so oh, well. well. Yeah, I, I'm, Good guy too. Yeah, did you see what he went through... Uh, Recently, with the uh, the Aboriginal kid that was hit by the car and killed, here you go. Well, this will fuck you up. Chris fucked up real bad. What? Um, I Chris Lilly. Yeah, I, I like Chris, but but I'd love to hear your opinion on this. Yeah. Uh, there was a uh, Aboriginal kid that had, I believe, he'd stolen a bike from somewhere. I think he was only really, really young, like really young, like a young teenager. Uh, stole a bike or something, and then this guy got in the car and ran him down in a four-wheel drive and killed oh, him. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know all about that, yeah. Uh, so uh, this guy only got a really light sentence for yeah. what he was doing. I think he only got a manslaughter. Yeah, which is bullshit. For, which is bullshit. It's, it's you know, if it's, you run it's someone the definition down and kill of murder. Them, even, even if, the, yeah, the kid was being a smart-ass, giving you the finger, whatever, it's not like it's a fight and the old guy punched him in the face. He, he, he killed him with a weapon, which yeah. is essentially a car. And well, that guy, be, be a fucking man yeah. and go, oh, that's the kid that stole the bike. I'll just tell the cops. I'll follow him yeah. to where he goes. Or maybe, you know, I'll just keep following him. He's on the bike. I've got yeah. a car. Mm. He can't keep going forever. Mm. Okay, yeah. either I'll just keep following him until he, the yeah. kid gets off the bike and runs mm. or I'll follow him home and tell his mother. Unfortunately, I think in a lot of those regional areas, there's a bit of a, uh, a backward the culture. Crime, but there is a crime culture as well. Yeah, there's a backward culture with, with the um, average Aussie, Aussie bloke who's, you know, fed up with, you know, the, the crime mm. culture that, that happens in a lot of those indigenous communities. And yep. they feel like they're hardly done by for a lot of other reasons and a lot of other issues that we won't go into. But um, it's uh, like when I was living in, in Taree working on the radio, I felt like there was a constant war with this little tribe of Aboriginals in Perfleet that were given a, a town just outside of Taree so that they, they build houses for them and they get the money. And they that? always come into town and stealing stuff or stealing cars or getting drunk. But that was just like, you know, not wasn't the entire community, but it, it just caused a really big divide and there wasn't really a lot of people promoting, um, you know, an integration in the community and helping them understand each other. But, like, at the end of the day, what, like, what you just said then, I understand why you said it, but mm. giving them a town, mm. we gave them a town and we gave them money. And, we yeah, gave that's, them and that's what the, they, they all did, say and they get angry about it. Well, you have a town, do you think that's all, all they, they, they need want to that. do? No. no, they've never even asked for that. Mm. We didn't give them a town. This is their land. Yeah. They gave us a town. Yeah. Well, we took a town from yeah. them. Yeah. They, I mean, in terms of like building them houses, giving yeah. them a town. I mean, it was always going to be their I, land. I understand they what you're saying. They went there and built the houses for them, yeah. I mean, uh, we're not... Two white men on here aren't going to solve it. I don't know no. how that, that problem is going to get solved, but mm. I do understand that there is, a, like, especially in Townsville, I think it's got one of the highest crime rates in Australia. There, There is yeah. a problem with... with uh, Youth going out there and, and doing it, both Aboriginal and white. Mm. Um, but, yeah, uh, what were we talking about before that? Oh, the, oh, the kids. So what Chris kid. did. Yeah. What did Chris do, yeah. So the day that that guy got that sentence, mm. uh, there were these big protests in Melbourne, um, lots of people out there. Chris did a song um, called Squashed N-Word. Yeah, on, on no, with, S, with S. Dot Mouse uh, back on, what was the show called, Marcus? He what? Angry Boys, okay. Angry Boys. So Angry Boys. He played a character on Angry Boys called S. Dot Smouse, which already back in I don't know. Like, yeah. Okay. So he's an, playing a character who's a politically incorrect character, but still. Well, I mean, it's it's, it's minstrel. I mean, it's 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 flat it's, it's out. Still, it's still him doing a performance. Well, yeah, but the problem was weeks before that, um, new t new TV in New Zealand had banned We Can Be uh, not We Can Be Heroes. They banned Summer Heights High and Jonah from Tonga because he was playing. Jonah, mm. who is essentially, you know, again, basically blackface. And they were saying that basically he was perpetrating uh, racist, racist stereotypes. Yeah. Um, now, the defence, the people that, you know, and I've been in this position where I've defended Chris and gone, oh, well, he plays all different characters from mm. all different walks of life. Yeah. Um, there's a difference between doing that and I suppose... Uh, 
you know, it's easy to do that. Mm. Much yeah. easier to do it to a 16 year old schoolgirl as it is yeah. than it would be for, you know, I mean, people, he, people that 70 not, years ago were lynched from trees and, and there's a history of mm. minstrel acts and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, he but that's blackface, like painted black and it's mammy and everything like that. I mean, sure, he's playing a, a Tongan kid and he looks a little bit tan and he's with an accent. Okay, but, but, but how far mouse. are we going to go with, with this where um, people aren't allowed to do accents anymore? You're not allowed to be a French guy if you're going to act in a film or you're not, you're not allowed to put on a German I, accent. I, I, I mean, I understand. how far do we go where, where the, the lines of comedy yes. are, are, are drawn so far back that we're just not allowed to I, take the piss out I of anything anymore? I understand that. I'm a, I'm a staunch defense. I'm a, yeah. like a free speech absolutist. If you want to be a racist and say stuff like that, fucking go ahead, please. Yeah. I want people to be able to say whatever the fuck they want, whether it be good or bad, say yeah. it so we have the right to comment I don't, back. I don't think it, uh, the N-word belongs anywhere in comedy. Unless, no. Unless some, you know... Um, black guy saying it on stage and, and, and doing it in a funny way. Uh, it's showing an endearment to his community and, you know, and his, and they his brothers They reappropriated a word that we yeah. used as as a, a derogatory word. So, yeah. but regardless, Chris had played that character, which is already quite interesting because HBO yeah. funded it. And if you go back and watch the show, there's African-American actors in the show that are playing along with him mm. when essentially you go, geez, this is actually quite weird. Like mm. American television funded this, African-American actors played along with it mm. and it's Chris in blackface. So anyway, he reposted posted a remix video of this song that he did all these years ago called Squash N-Word, reposted it on his Twitter account the day that a guy uh, got his sentence for manslaughter. Did he know? For running, well, he said he didn't know. No, he, he well, said it was, that's, that's understandable. He didn't know, but... But all it did but was... still the song is bad. I mean, it doesn't sound like anything. Well, the, so, the song is funny. about a, a young African-American kid that got hit by a truck and got killed. Yeah, well, that's what's funny about that. Anyway, nothing, we're no, talking about it and we're not seeing it in a street context. No, so. no, 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 we're not. And, you know, I again, like, you know, Chris was a massive inspiration to me, but I can also empathise and see why... Uh, mm. I've got no dog in the fight, yeah. but I can understand why there are people that are extremely pissed off and annoyed and found it quite insensitive. Even mm. if it was a genuine, oh, fuck, mm. you know, I didn't mean to do it at that time, it probably just shouldn't have been done mm. ever. It shouldn't have been yeah. out there. Well, I mean, that, that's the thing. With comedy, you, you take risks. <laughs> he's taken a risk that, that didn't work, but you, you can't take away from him the incredible success that he's had yeah. over there. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's, you know, alongside, you know, Paul Hogan is one of the, the best yeah. Australian comedians that's, yeah. that's uh, done so well worldwide. Yeah. And, um, you know, he's been a, a, a good mate to me and you. And, like, whenever mm. I've seen him around Bondi, because he lives over that way, he's always up for a chat, which is cool. He used mm. to be friends with a lot of people on um, on Big Brother when I worked on the show mm. as well. Um, but, yeah, that's cool, man. Well, I, I love your stand-up, love love your, your show, and I'm really excited about um, us doing some stuff together. But we won't mm. give away too much. If mm. you've watched this interview up until now, here's a little nugget of excitement for you. Um, can we can we say that we might be doing something together down we, the track? Uh, that, yeah, yeah. I, I guess we're going to be doing something. Um, mm. I suppose we, won't we have a venture, so stay tuned. Watch this space. Yeah. And uh, if you sponsor either us, either either of us on Patreon.com, mm. then you will be the first to find out. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And uh, and also, if you sponsor either us either of us on Patreon.com, uh, what do you get? Well, you get. Well, I have a I have a group, like a private group, that people can join. I do a live stream on it every week, and mm. everyone just posts certain shit. But my goal with my Patreon is is to make enough money, not from Patreon, just enough money in the future that mm. I and I will genuinely do this, and I'll put it on record that I'll be able to go. All right, guys, we're stopping the Patreon, and every single cent that you've donated, I'm going to go because th- I can see all their names. I'll yeah. just send it back to you. Oh, nice. I don't want it. I don't want it. I just need it now to be able to keep going. But oh, so, so what do you mean after the money? You, you made Once, enough money and you're getting sponsors, you, you're going to backtrack it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Mm, I think so. I'm going to do that too, Mum. <laughs> yeah. It's right now. Uh, but do you give away uh, like free tickets to your shows or anything Yeah, I like mean, that? Uh, it's, it's all, you're the first to know about everything. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we've just changed the logo of the show. We just rebranded the whole show. And, and in the group, they were the ones that chose which logo we were going for. So it's sort of, mm. it's a creative venture among all of us. They're literally producers of the show along mm. with me. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's great to have that community there of of people that are that are all about it, and they communicate with each other, which is awesome because I'm not always able to do it because I'm pretty oh, busy. Cool. So they're on there; everyone knows each other. It's just a big fucked up you, family. You built your own little community cult. That, I call that's it a cult. awesome. Yes, nice. I'm like, uh, what's his name? Elron. You can call me Elron Hubbard. No, oh, thank you, Elron Hubbard. Yes. Yeah, it's going to be a religion soon. Yeah. Yeah, so it's tax I. deductible to make a donation to the religion of yeah, Josh Wade. Yeah, yeah, you went and yeah. Are you a Wadeist? Yes, I am. Wadeist. I'm 100% Wadeist. 
Thank you. That's got a ring to it. Bless you. You can come up with your own little blessing sign. Yeah, it'll just be that. No, <laughs> yeah. I'm a waitist. <laughs> Fuck you. Hey, um, I uh, changing the topic yep. completely. Can you please tell me uh, what, what the story is with you proposing to Chappelle Corby? Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, Chappelle's great. Hello, Chappelle. Are you in love with Chappelle? Chappelle? I think Chappelle's a great chick. Uh, I won't go into what really happened, but um, Chappelle is just an everyday chick, uh, as normal. The whole family is as normal as, as you can get. Um, are you avoiding the question, are you and Chappelle together or not? No, we're not together. Uh, what, what's no. with proposing to her I with think, a BB I, bottle? I think it was like stealing candy from a baby. Uh, Where'd we, you run into her? Or were she you, came to my were show. Were you actually dating? Oh, she, she came to your show? Yeah, yeah. She, her and the family came to my show and... Uh, is she nice? Yeah, of course she is. Full on bogan, weirdo? No, 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 Mike. No, no, no. Pot smoker? No. Drug smuggler? No, 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 no. Don't push those agendas. Well, she is a convicted drug smuggler. Are you getting paid to say that? <laughs> well, that's the first thing that they say in all the TV networks. Of course it convicted is. Convicted drug smuggler yeah. Chappelle Corby. Yeah, exactly. Well, Go she, look well, at she was convicted and in jail for a long time in, uh, in Indonesia. Expandable.tv. Yeah, mm. so are a lot of people that yeah. don't do crimes. Uh, but anyway, uh, I, won't, I won't get too far into it. But um, I'll sum it up for us. Well, I just you, said the you, website. You think she was innocent? It. Yeah, she was 100% innocent. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. Even though there was all the drugs in her body bag, she didn't put it there. No, she didn't. Right. I mean, if you've got a, if, if I get on an aeroplane and I've got a ticket that says my bag weighs 21 kilos yeah. and I get to a certain country and it weighs 26 kilos mm-hmm. and they won't DNA test my, uh, my drug bag and then yeah. for some reason all the security cameras go missing at the airport uh, that day, okay. I'd probably... Did that happen, did it? Yeah, of course What's it that did. website again? Expandables.tv. Who put that website together? Don't know. I don't know. But uh, you did. Bit of, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got some time. I got some time. Wow. Well, um, let's get off conspiracy theories and talk about a few things that have been happening in the Australian press mm. of late. Mm. Uh, Lisa Wilkinson, she just got fired from the Today Show where her contract was not renewed. And mm. it, it's come out that it was all about uh, pay equality, gender pay equality. and Bullshit. Uh, I mean, I, I think it's bullshit. I mean, I love Lisa Wilkinson. I've worked with her before. Um, as, as much as she, she gets a little bit crazy left sometimes in her arguments, I, uh, I think she's a lovely lady, does a lot for the community. Mm. She's, um, she's done a lot for women in the industry. She, uh, you know, editor of the Huffing, Huffington Post and, you know, she was the editor of Women's Weekly for many, many years mm. and I think 10 years on the Today Show. Yeah, it was or, a long was time. It more than it's that. been a long time. Uh, which is amazing to be getting up at, you know, three o'clock every day yeah, every in day. the morning and, and preparing yourself for breakfast television. She's done some great interviews. Yeah. Um, but to say that you're worth exactly the same amount of money as someone who's, you know, won a gold logie and hosts a primetime shows that have, you know, millions of viewers when you're only doing that one other show, I think it's a bit rich. Yeah, I think... Um, Especially in the current climate where the pie for the money for the TV industry is shrinking. So and you go, hey, I want more money. I think yeah. it's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you got a different take on it? No, I, I think I think uh, Carl's con- contract's coming up soon. Mm. Carl's done. I mean, if you look at him, that guy's weathered as hell. I mean, he's lost his... Uh, I don't know if he lost it, but, you know, he he's... You know, him and his wife got a divorce, yeah. uh, and I would say I didn't wouldn't say it's the only issue, and it's very, you know, I don't think it's a, probably the right thing for me to do to mm-hmm. have my input on someone else's relationship, but I fucking I will. Um, <laughs> Why not? I, I would say waking up at at you know four a.m. every morning and yeah. then doing you know he's he's a that workaholic. Would it yeah. would definitely put some sort of strain on on that relationship. Totally. Um, but he's a workaholic. He's been doing it for fucking ages. I think he's been doing it longer than her. He's mm. got that you know he's got the primetime shows whatever i i believe that carl will take a break take a mm. step back for a little bit once his contract's up his contract finishes after hers mm. i believe that it's a good news story for mm. um lisa i don't think it was necessarily over a pay just I, I reckon her and carl would have sat down and gone look you know this is coming up like what do you, what should i do you know they're friends they're with each other every day i'm sure they get a lot they're not friends maybe not um, um i don't think so yeah. I, I've, I've worked with them and, uh, you know, I, I just caught a vibe. I didn't really see, like, a, a really good energy there. And, uh, yeah. Is that, like, someone, though, that just, you're with all day, every day, that's, like, you've lost yeah. that? Anyway, I, I think it was much smarter of her. She's taken $500,000 more from Channel 10 to Has do the she, sun- though, yeah. to do what? The One Sunday- show a week? Yeah, I'd fucking take that because Bullshit. if she... Bullshit. There's no way in the world Channel 10 would be able to afford to pay her that much money to host a show once a week. No way. Well, 
I used to work for Channel 10. Not, I, mm. I know CBS have taken over, but I really don't think that they've got that kind of money. Well, that's what I thought was reported, but... Um, but, but, I mean, I, I think if someone's doing a job alongside... A woman's doing a job alongside a man and they've got the same experience and they've... Same you know, job, paid the same. They pay them the same. Yeah. But I mean, show like, business is different Dave, like Dave that. Hughes, um, just his co-host, Kate... Um, Stand-up comedian, yeah, Kate Musi. Yeah. Anyway, um, he took a pay cut because they couldn't afford to pay her more to match his pay, so he took a pay cut on his show. But he shouldn't be the one getting the, the, the pat on the back for that. Yeah. but I mean, but, it's good. It's, it's great that he did that and, yeah. and it's a statement to make, but at the same time, mm. like... She's doing, she, she's doing the same job as him and she's a very experienced, yeah. um, amazing woman. Uh, I mean, he hosts the Logies and does incredible stand-up. So, yeah, pay him the same. Kyle and Jackie O, I mean, she, Jackie O knew that she wasn't getting paid the same. Really? Put a foot down and ended up getting the same amount of money. Good. Good on her. That's how, that's how it should be. So it's good that the world is changing and, you know, women are being looked after a lot, a lot more than they were. Uh, but do you think that, uh, that the whole gender equality issue is being taken too far or is, is that a good thing has been taken too far to bring back you know an equilibrium where it where it should be uh, it's like it's i think it's one of two things i'm sure we've spoke about this before marcus but um i guess it's like mike mike and marcus um <laughs> it's marcus over there i know yeah fuck it. He's, he's here he's the studio <laughs> the camera, audience. The camera. um you you know when you listen to like these uh you know the people that talk about the the gender wage gap yeah. myth um it does exist in certain areas like Hollywood and stuff like that. Like, yeah, yeah. They're, they're in these sort of industries where you're self-employed, mm. um, it's, a, it's a lot easier for these producers and, and stuff like that and, you know, executives to pay women less money. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, you know, if I'm a cleaner and I've been cleaning for two years and I'm a male mm. and you're a cleaner and you're a woman yeah. and you've been cleaning for two years, yeah. it doesn't exist. It's illegal. It, it doesn't make sense. It's illegal. I, I think we're, we're talking about it and, and it's on the news and people are going, oh, yeah, you know, Carl should be being paid the same as Lisa or whatever you, you think on the subject or, you know, Husey and Kate or Carl and Jackie or whoever they are deserves the same amount of money, gender equality. But those people are earning millions when you talk about someone who's a bank teller or drives Uber or, you know, works down at the local chemist or yeah. the 7-Eleven, they're all getting the same amount. Yeah. And you're right, yeah. it's completely illegal yeah. Yeah, to yeah. pay someone any different. If you're in parliament, they have a, a standard wage. They yeah. go, oh, this, this lady uh, shouldn't get paid as much as she, yeah. if she's prime minister. They have a prime minister yeah. wage. I think it's a million bucks a year or something like that. Yeah. And if you're caught doing it, then, yeah, you should, you should be mm. punished for it. But... Yeah. Um, yeah, it's an interesting one, mm. uh, and obviously then you go and look at statistics and women choose mm. to do different jobs to what men choose to do, um, just in general. Mm. Um, it's it's not black and white is what yeah. I'll say. I don't mm. necessarily have an opinion on it because I don't know enough about yeah. it, yeah, yeah. but I would lean to it being a bit more. Have you heard about like fourth wave feminism? No, what's do you know what this? Well, this is what this feminism. is what is happening right now. Okay, tell me what this is. Inside of feminism, you have people that are transgender, so male to female, mm. uh, that are fighting for rights within against feminists mm. um, because they want the same rights that other feminists have. And then inside of that, you have black feminists that believe they don't have the same. Oh, equality shit. as oh, white me. feminists. It's hurting my brain. Yeah, yeah. Can we not talk about this, it's, this it's, stuff anymore? It's this is just itself. ridiculous. And it's if anyone's even looking at this. But um, speaking of uh, people fighting and getting into trouble in yeah. Hollywood, poor old Harvey Weinstein. Don't poor old. Oh, what happened? Harvey made so many incredible movies, the Pulp Fiction, all the Miramax films and mm. the, you know, discovering of, you know, Ben Affleck and Matt Damon mm. and... He's done so many incredible things, but all along the way, he's been a serial touching rapist. women and feeling women and pushing them into hotel rooms. And there's a, there's a the uh, LA County Sheriff's Department just announced that uh, they're going to be pressing charges on him over the rape of a of an Italian um, Italian actress. There's recordings that have come out that people have, have held back, saying, "Oh, you know," of him saying, "You know, just let me in your hotel room, or let me just give you a massage mm. and stuff like that." I mean, but this is something that has been going on in Hollywood and the entertainment industry for a long, long time. Yeah. And it's great that finally Hollywood's coming out and, and speaking up about it. They've been very scared to, to speak out about it for a long, long time. 
but that's because they don't want to bite the hand that feeds them yes. Russian caviar. I can understand you, that. You know what I mean? Because you're going to get, oh, hang on, this guy, Harvey Weinstein, is going to give me something that I, I could never imagine in my wildest dreams. He's going to make sure that I get the front row tickets at the Super Bowl. He's going to make sure that I get to meet Bruce Springsteen if I want to go to that concert. Yep. He's going to pay me millions of dollars for my script. Yep. Um, okay, he, he did something in a hotel room with a girl. I'm just not going to... I'm not going to talk about that. That's, you know. No dog in my fight. Be, people have turned, turned a blind eye to it for, for, for too long. And, and now people aren't going to get away with it as much anymore. It's still going to happen. They're not going to get away with it as much anymore. And it's going to change. I think, well, he's a scumbag and he always was a scumbag. Yeah, but everyone knew that. Everyone were, knew, yeah. But he's a talented scumbag. But that doesn't mean that he should be able to get away with what he did. No, no way. I mean, you look at someone like Bill Cosby uh, and someone like Harvey Weinstein, they could have been uh, some of the biggest rapists, not just in the entertainment industry, but in the world. Mm, yeah. They got, because they of got their position, they got away famous. with it for so long. Mm. I mean, how many rapes does someone get away with before they get fucking locked up for being a mm. serial rapist? These are people that have done it systematically, institutionally, for years. It was in his contract mm. with people that if he fucked someone or if he you know did something he would be fined 250,000 if he did it again 500,000 like it just kept mm. going people knew about it I want to know mm. what the fuck Harvey Weinstein did and who the fuck fucked him off mm. that they went alright yeah. today's your day yeah well his, his brother it runs the uh, Miramax, the Weinstein company and he acted like he didn't know shit yeah. get fucked they're all Come in on it they all knew it, they're all in so, on it. So should they all be taken down for it as well? Fucking I mean, oath they I mean, should. I, I think if they knew that something was going on for so long and th that company, Miramax, the Weinstein Group, they have made billions Do you and have billions a sister? of dollars. Do you have a sister? Yeah. Okay. How would you feel about the person that raped your sister if you knew that someone in their family knew the entire time and didn't do anything about oh. it? I, I, Would you want to fucking kill them? I want to kill them, yeah. Fucking I'll oath. So that's, they're in the exact same vein. Yeah. Fuck them off. Fuck the lot of them off. And I yeah. hope, I hope to God that it is the domino that falls, mm. that is the house, of, the house of cards goes down because Harvey Weinstein is just one mm. of many. Mm. He's the tip of the iceberg and what he's done is nothing compared to what else is going on. Mm. We're talking about some really, really, really fucked up shit mm. that is just far beyond that. But when, I, when we say it's been going on for a long time, I mean, uh, not, just, not just to women, I mean, predominantly women, but I mean, you look at the, uh, the two Corys yep. and, and what happened to them as they were growing up, I mean, uh, Corey Haim and um, yep. Corey Feldman. Feldman. Uh, I mean, the, it's just the stories that have come out from when uh, they were making films and, and directors molesting them and doing all, the, all sorts of horrible things, and they were basically shunned and ignored by Hollywood. Still, when, when, and still, when they, when they tried to, to to say, look, look what happened to us, and and how our lives were ruined. Yep, it's it's sickening. Every one of them. Look yeah. at Britney Spears. Look at, look at every single one of them and tell me that it didn't happen to them. Mm. It's messed up. It absolutely makes my blood boil to the point where I just don't want to be in it. A, a, a lot of times um, you, you would see, you know, like be all these beautiful women are, are coming out and saying, you know, um, I you know, made all these films my whole life. I got my first break because Harvey Weinstein gave me my first feature, but he's a dirt bag, slime bag and... You know, and he, and he touched me and tried to push me in a hotel room. Yep. But would we would we know who those women are, and would they have had a career if it wasn't for him? I mean, yeah, would, those, I mean would that woman yeah. still yeah. made the, the same choice? Yeah, I think if, I think the market reacts to talent no matter what it is. Mm. It the if I have an app, but there's no one saying that's a, it's not what you know, it's who you know, and he's abused his position of yes, power. Sure, yes, yes and no. But yes women, and no. women have the opportunity to if say, I, "No, I'm not going in the hotel room with you." If I make the next Facebook, mm. all right, yeah, it's gonna make, it's gonna fast track me to get there better if I put it out to the market. But if it's good, mm. if what I'm offering is good, yeah. people will take it no matter what. People didn't give a fuck if Gwyneth Paltrow knew Harvey Weinstein or not. The consumer didn't. Maybe the industry yeah. did. We didn't care. She was a good actress. Yeah. We would watch her. We'd watch all of them. Mm. So, no, I, I don't think that that's a, a reasonable... Um, but a lot, a lot of people are like Weinstein in their position of power. I mean, they've, they've had one or two movie hits and all of a sudden they've got this worldwide network that they can promote all their films to and whether or not they think they can just feel someone up or something else that's disgusting and there's no excuse for... Uh, a lot of those people f uh, are like, well, what can you do for me? You know, I know that I'm going to be able to, you know, make you famous. And he, he promised it to a lot of women and and it's, it's coming out that he, he touched a lot of women inappropriately 
and he never even gave him any work. Can we just remember as well that Harvey Weinstein wasn't born, wasn't the first one to do this and yeah. also wasn't... Well, where did the term casting couch come from? Well, well, yeah, and, and why, you know, he, no one's born that way, mm. I don't think. So, like, he wasn't born and as a five-year-old's running around going, I'm going to feel up every woman in Hollywood. Mm. Um, so is it not Harvey Weinstein? Harvey Weinstein is fucked, but is he fucked because of the system mm. as a whole is not right? Mm. I think that's, that's the root cause. People are going to continue. Is up. Sim, pe- people are going to keep doing it as long as that, mm. that system keeps going. Taking down Harvey Weinstein ain't going to stop shit. Mm. Yeah. But we like to pat ourselves on the back and, and think so. Good, good day for us. And Hollywood is changing so much. And, and I think uh, the, the days of the, all the Weinstein kind of crap going on, it, it, they, they, have, they haven't gone you're still going to see that happening, but it's going to be reported a lot more and it's a good thing that it came out because women aren't going to have to put up with that shit as much. Mm. Hopefully, yeah. fingers crossed. But, uh, I think the yeah. modelling industry must be much worse. Oh, the modeling, Some of the stories I've heard about the modelling industry are ridiculous. I think it's past like Hollywood. Like photographers are like just expect to get a blowjob if they're going to hire a model, you know? Mm. Like one, one – because I've got a few friends that are photographers. One photographer was telling me that there's this guy in Paris – that um, he has an assistant that comes over and, and gives him a towel to clean himself up, you know, after the, the model that comes in to do a photo shoot, does the photo shoot, and he just whops it out. Just, there you go. See you later. Thanks a lot. You know that Terry Richardson guy? Have you seen that guy? Terry Richardson. He takes little photos of a lot of celebrities, but they're always really, like, he's got this exact look. Just, I'll show you him later on. He's mm. an interesting guy, but... Oh, well, Hollywood's fucked. Um, yeah, it is fucked. But uh, on the good side of Hollywood, let's yeah. say some positive stuff. Yeah, yeah. What have you been watching in Net- on Netflix? Because I just started watching uh, a show only a couple of nights ago called My College Friends. Mm. Do you know the comedians Key and Peele? Yes, yeah. Um, yes, yes. So, um, oh, is, it, is it Key? Oh, I think, yeah, Key, I can't remember his first name. Yeah. So I only started watching it, but it's one of the funniest shows on Netflix, which yeah. you're definitely going to watch. And uh, another one called The Good Place, mm-hmm. uh, which is hilarious. It's, it's about um, going to heaven and then realizing that they've got your name confused with someone else and you're not supposed to be there. Mm-hmm. Uh, two awesome shows, highly recommend. Do you, you know, watch a lot of Netflix? Or I was other? just saying last night, we were talking last night, and I was like, I have Netflix. When I first got it, I was all about it, and then now I hardly even open it. Mm. I mean, I started watching House of Cards, <laughs> of course. I loved House yeah, of Cards. Yeah, conspiracy, uh, of course you would. I was like, oh, yeah, of course this is how it works. Mm. Um, I watched a little bit of American Horror Story and then now, you know, I just don't have, I feel like I don't have the time to to consume myself in a show. I'd love to, but, I mean, YouTube's great because I can, you know, some people put 10-minute things up and I can, mm. I have those little spaces in the day where I can consume that, but otherwise mm. I, I just feel like I don't have the time nor what do I... What about the podcast? You mean you got a podcast? Do you listen to other people's? I listen to... Joe Rogan? Yeah, of, of course. Um, ben Shapiro? Russell Brand. Any of them? Yeah. Russell Brand. Do you yeah. watch his Trues yes. thing? Yeah, I do, I do. I, sometimes he goes a little bit left on me, but... Mm, he I does, doesn't he? Well, there's an interesting thing about Russell because I've seen a lot of people talk about him being associated with the Fabian Society and, mm. you know, he's, he, he's married to, I don't know who it is, but she's got a lot of connections because her family are a part of. Mm. Uh, Russell's interesting because I love Russell to, to death, but then I've also heard people make some interesting statements that he is mm. like an Alex Jones where it's controlled mm. opposition. Mm. But I also, I, when I watch Russell I, and I listen to him and I, 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 you know, you look into someone's eyes and mm. you go, he, you know, he genuinely believes this. Mm. I, don't, I don't think, and I think maybe he might be aligned to, mm. I mean, he's got the number 33 tattooed on his wrist. What does that mean? Well, I mean, he says it means, I mean, I think Jesus died when he was 33 and he says that's what it means, but it's also, you know, Freemasonry is, mm. uh, you know, the top number there is, is 33 and, you know, 33 in the occult is quite a um, prevalent number in numerology and mm. all those different things. So, um Interesting guy. I, I love just listening to him speak, regardless of... Yeah, he's very intelligent. Mm. He comes up with some interesting points. Mm. As do you, Josh mm. Wade. Mm. Yes. Um, so what, else, what else were we going to talk about? I, uh, I wrote a whole list of shit on my phone, but uh, we're actually using that as the light. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> Let me just check. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Josh Wade, that was absolutely amazing. Yeah, it was fun. I, I think we, we went hard. We went... Uh, Harvey got it. I gave it a, gave it a little bit to old Harvey copped it. 
Uh, Who else copped it? We, we talked about... Uh, Woody you Harrelson's know, dad got it for Woody, a Woody Harrelson. Lots, lots of people copying it left, right and centre. Yeah. Everything's a rich man's trick. You gave it to Chappelle for a bit, which I don't I respect you to. for that. Yep. Why did you do that for? Oh, uh, Because, you know, I, I just... I, I have some faith in our authorities and I, and I just have a <laughs> feeling that there's a lot of conspiracy theories out there and I, I, I just think that that might be one of them that might not be true. One of them that won't be like, are you putting that in the flat I just earth think, you bucket? know, like, I, I know a lot of people on the Gold Coast that said that, you know, her dad was dealing drugs and, you know, they, everyone knew about it. She was in on it. She actually knew it was in the body bag and, that, and, and the bodyboard bag. I know there's also a lot of a lot of evidence to say that that wasn't the case. I just don't know. I think the one thing that fucks me up is, you know, if it's $50,000 worth of weed in Australia, that same amount is worth $5,000 in Bali. Like, why would you take Yeah, that? why would you take it the other way? That doesn't make question. sense. I'll go look into it. Okay, well, I, I, clearly I've got to do a little bit of research. Yeah, I'm not and saying I, And I, I guess uh, talking to you, I shouldn't trust the, trust the authorities as, as much as I should. Not with that one. Yeah. Interesting. Well, I look forward to uh, our, our collaboration yes. that, uh, yeah, yeah. that you will hear more about in the coming months. And yeah. uh, if you like basketball, come and watch the Sydney Kings game. I'm a courtside announcer. Contact me on uh, Patreon and uh, I'll give you some free tickets maybe and if, if you uh, get involved and hit your Patreon as well. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if, if you like... If you like, you like him. Estranged thinking, <laughs> paranoid thoughts, schizophrenic rants. And my channel is the place for you. And the 11th of November at the Sydney Comedy Club at Luna Park. Come and see me talk more crazy out there shit on stage. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Good Josh Wade on the Goldman. mic. Mike Goldman on his microphones. These are his. It's mine. Thank you. <laughs>